article, camp mates with wickets camp in Port Harcourt over reconciliation efforts in the People's Democratic Party PDP. And uncertainty intrigues as APC reacts to the call for the sack of the APC National Chairman, Senator Abdullahi Adamu. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. This is Politics Today, live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Wakimale in Abuja. Some of the breaking news that you see right there on your screen. We can confirm to you that four more of the Cardinal train attack victims have been released by the uh, abductors. The terrorists have today released four more of the Cardinal train attack victims. We'll bring you more details of that story and the course of the program. We continue our countdown on the ASU strike action by the university lecturers, which has entered 188 days since the university teachers in the federal universities in the country began to strike action, keeping students away from the classrooms. The start of between the federal government and the lecturers uh, began uh, sometimes on the 14th of February this year, and President Muhammad Buhari intervened about a month ago, but it appears the intervention of the Minister of Education as instructed by the President has yielded uh, not a total result as ASU insists on payment of backlog of salaries. Nigerians are looking forward to the stakeholders getting their acts together to resolve what has become a national embarrassment. Tonight, we keep our eyes on what is happening in Port Harcourt, the import, the implication of that meeting, and whether or not there is being now a resolution, a final, full and final resolution of the situation. We'll find out tonight on the program and get inside in some, uh, with some of uh, the leaders of the party and a way forward for the PDP. We understand that there are also crucial meetings in the party today uh, in relation to the campaign council formation and other issues relating to the 2000. And 23 elections. Stay with me, everyone. But before we go into that, we also will tell you that tonight on the program, we get uh, some information on what is happening within the rank and file of the APC leadership. Is there any plot to remove Abdullah Adamu? Well, they say in politics, there is no fire without smoke, there's no smoke without fire. We'll find out all of this tonight. Stay with me, everyone. First and foremost, let's serve you with some of your political round up stories. The House of Representatives Committee on Finance is querying a contract between the federal government and an investor leading to the payment of $33 million monthly to the Azura Power Station located in Edo State. The lawmakers are concerned that the details of the agreement are shady and question why the Nigerian bulk electricity trading company would sign such an agreement without the approval of the Federal Executive Council. The committee is further concerned that the agreements require that the monthly $33 million be paid whether the power is evacuated from the Azura Power Station or not. The Court of Appeals City in Abuja has reserved judgment in an appeal filed by a PDP chieftain challenging the emergence of Mr. David Edebi as the flag bearer of the People's Democratic Party in the 2023 governorship election for Delta State. At the resumed hearing of the appeal, a three-man panel of the appeal court, led by Justice Peter Igi, said the date for the judgment would be communicated to parties after the parties had adopted their written arguments. A federal high court presided over by Justice Taiwo Taiwo had on the 7th of July 2022 ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission and the PDP to recognize Mr. Idebi as the candidate of the PDP in the 2023 governorship election in Delta State. In his judgment, Justice Taiwo disqualified Mr. Oberowori as the governorship candidate of the PDP in Delta State. The Kaduna State House of Assembly has passed a bill amending the local government's law 2018, which gives the lawmakers the legal right to carry out proper oversight functions on the local councils without any hindrance. The bill, which was sponsored by the member representing Jamaa constituency, Honorable Ali Khalat, was passed during plenary after a comprehensive report was submitted by the House Committee 
Committee on Judiciary. Speaking to channels television after the sitting, the Deputy Speaker, Honorable Isaac Outer, who presided over plenary, said the amended law has given the Assembly the power to checkmate the administrative activities of government in the state, especially as it relates to financial spending and disciplining of local government chairmen and their deputies whenever they are found culpable. We pass their budgets here. And as, as enshrined in the law, it is our responsibility to oversight what they are doing, including the executive, uh, which uh, including the executive as uh, arm of government. Hundreds of members of the People's Democratic Party in the Gabi local government area of Kaduna State have defected to the Labour Party with the determination to join hands to take over the presidency and the Kaduna State Government House in the 2023 general elections. The members say they defected to the Labour Party because of the injustice that was meted to them by the PDP, as well as the lack of purposeful leadership exhibited by the APC government to tackle insecurity and other socioeconomic problems confronting the nation. The All Progressives Congress in River State has instituted two cases against the Independent National Electoral Commission and the People's Democratic Party to disqualify the ruling party in the state from participating in some elections next year. The APC is praying the Federal High Court in Port Harcourt to disqualify the governorship candidate of the PDP, Siminilai Fubara, from contesting the elections over allegations that his party erred on some provisions of the new Electoral Act. Also in the second suit, the APC is seeking the power of the courts to disqualify all 32 candidates of the PDP for the state assembly elections for the same reasons. The reasons are that the PDP delayed in forwarding the register containing the names of their candidates to the Independent National Electoral Commission within 30 days as required by law. And the presidency of Nigeria will continue to elude the southeast as long as the Igbos remain as divided as they are now. This is the submission of a group called Igbo Kwenu for Asiwaju and Shetima. The group says the inability of Southeast aspirants to come together and produce a candidate for the party primaries was responsible for the failure of the Southeast to produce a president for Nigeria. Looking at it, um, I felt at that point my brothers or sisters who were contesting should have come to one, on one table to decide for one or two persons to go, but rather that wasn't the case. Thank you so much, everyone. Let's brace up now and get into uh, the mix of the conversation for tonight. And it is with the ruling All Progressive Congress APC that we begin tonight, where we understand that uh, there are uh, plots to remove the national chairman of the APC, Senator Abdullah Adamu. But the APC has since debunked that report. The National Publicity Secretary of the, of the APC, Mr. Felix Moka, in a statement says that the report was being sponsored by opposition political parties, saying that uh, there are reports there were plots to remove Mr. Adamu from office. The former governor of Nasara State, Abdullah Adamu, was elected as APC national chairperson earlier this year. There are also issues relating to uh, in the controversy over the candidates, some of the candidates that emerged on the list of APC to INEC. We speak on some of these issues. So now I'm being joined by the spokesperson of the All Progressive Congress APC, Mr. Felix Moka, who joins us virtually from Lagos. Thank you so much, Mr. Moka, for joining us tonight. Give us a sense of, um, of what is happening. First and foremost, there are talks that uh, within the NWC, there is some undercurrent that uh, troubling the party. Things are not going perfectly. And in politics, uh, there is no uh, smoke without fire. And uh, on the outside uh, is the fact that uh, there are plots to remove uh, the, uh, the national chairman. And you have uh, said that this is, uh, these are the plans of your opposition. And the question the opposition will be asking you tonight, what's our business with what is happening in your party? Deal with the problems of your party. The fact that there are agitations in your party to remove your national chairman is a big problem, isn't it? Uh, thank you, Sheo, for having me uh, tonight. Uh, good evening to you. Uh, Sheo, you know, yes, we often say that there's no smoke without fire. But actually, in this day and age, uh, we have evolved our technological you know, advancement to the point where actually you can actually have smoke without fire. I mean, look at those who uh, enjoy vaping. Uh, the new device that you know emits smoke even when uh, there's no fire in the device. Look, fact is 
you know, Senator uh, Abdullah Adamu is the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress APC. He's our chairman. And, you know, we are not aware, and those of us on the NWC certainly are not, you know, participating or involved or even, you know, know of a plot to remove a national chairman. You know, why? Why would we want to remove a national chairman? Why would any member of our party desire to remove a national chairman who was just recently installed as the chairman of the party and who, quite frankly, has done an amazing job so far, you know, as head of uh, the ruling party? Now, think about it. We just came off of our primaries where the party conducted and delivered the largest and easily the freest you know, primaries um, of any political party in this country. We had over 23, about 23 presidential aspirants who contested in our primaries. Today, you're not hearing of anyone really yelling and screaming about how they were you know, cheated at the primaries. It was open, you covered it, it was you know, watched globally, and it was a spectacular event. And we're very proud of that accomplishment. You know, see, so look, we will not be distracted by those who would rather, you know, see APC descend into some, some chaos, you know, to their delight. We are not about to descend into that sort of, you know, um, crisis. We're not in any kind of crisis. And certainly there's no plot to remove a national chairman or any other member of the National Working Committee. We all stand completely united behind our chairman. And we have only one singular commitment at this point, which is to actually uh, you know, just launch a campaign. We cannot wait for INEC to you know, um, you know, sound the bell. So we can launch you know, a serious, formidable campaign uh, in the hope that you know, Nigerians will elect all of our candidates from the presidential candidate to the you know, uh, last House of Assembly candidate uh, ahead of the elections in 2023. Now, uh, l l let's take a look at some of the issues that have been raised. First and foremost, there are those who believe that there is being a failure of the leadership of the party, perhaps in the manner in which uh, the party has been led into the last election it participated in, in Austrian State, for example. That is a state controlled by the APC, and a party has lost that election lot one state down out of the 22 states that the APC controls. Now, you're going into the 2023 election. That was your litmus test, a signal of perhaps how the future might look for your party going as a sitting political party, perhaps the manner in which Nigerians are receiving or perceive or the popularity of your party with Nigerians was shown in the Australian state election. These are some of the arguments that have been made by some uh, members of your party and the reason they were giving for the removal of your chairman. Look, uh, Sean, Ekiti State is also a state in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It is APC control. And we had elections in Ekiti State just, you know, barely a couple of months or so before Oshun, and we won that hands down. Look, we had an election in Oshun, yes, as of today. Uh, the, the PDP uh, was announced as winner of that election. And you are aware that the uh, incumbent governor who contested that election uh, is also uh, challenging the outcome of that election. But that's not the point. The point is that it is a contest. And in a contest, somebody wins. You know, unfortunately, as of today, again, pending whatever happens with the uh, intent of the governor to, to challenge that election, you know, yes, you know, INEC has declared the result and has announced that we did not win that election. That is fine, but that's not a reason, you know, to launch any sort of effort to remove uh, our national chairman. You know, we all participated in that election. It's not just national chairman. Yes, he's the leader of the NWC, but he's a member of the NWC as well. So, and in any event, you know, whatever happens in Oshun State uh, had to do with some of the local contests, very peculiar contests of Oshun, and we cannot extrapolate the event in Oshun to a national scale to begin to suggest that that is a pointer to what is to come. I do not share that you know, uh, pessimism. I think that you know, come 2023, we are poised to compete and to win 
you know, our elections in 2023. Yes, lessons will be learned. There are some matters that are internal to APC, which we are aware of and which we are dealing with and we continue to deal with. And that's not unusual for a political party as large as the APC. But make no mistake, we are at the table, we are learning our lessons, and we are you know, completely throwing all that into the strategy we're building uh, towards uh, the next general election. Uh, but I, I'd like you to speak to uh, some of these issues. You, you said, you mentioned Ekiti, uh, agree that your party won that one. Uh, out of two, uh, you lost one, you won one. Uh, but Oshun is uh, the recent one, which uh, some people would say it was a litmus test for your party. Uh, why, why would it be a litmus test? What, what makes Oshun so unique? Based on to be the litmus test. Of your party. It's not the latest election we, that, we had. It's future, also right? that these state elections are microcosm of the macrocosm, uh, um, uh, uh, just a little picture of a bigger one. Now, uh, so there's all those, uh, the others in your party who have said, Look at what happened in your presidential primary. In one breath, your party national chairman says, uh, someone has been endorsed. It ended up being that perhaps the president never endorsed such a person. A kind of confusion that was happening in your party. And perhaps the, those who are also of the belief that your party has not been able to resolve some of the differences in the party. The reconciliation efforts have been unsuccessful. You can see the exits that has uh, uh, um, bedeviled uh, that reconciliation effort. Several national uh, federal lawmakers have left your party. These are the signals that have been seen. And they are saying these are pointers that your party might be beaten in 2023. Uh, Sheo, no, I, I, I don't, um, that, that's not a picture that is, you know, uh, self-evident from uh, both the primaries and some of the, you know, movements you, uh, you refer to. Now, keep in mind, the presidential primary is behind us. We have a presidential candidate in, you know, a stellar individual, the Asiwaju, the Jagaban, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, he is our candidate. And we have a vice presidential candidate. And all of what happened at primaries belongs in the past. It's over. We're looking at the future. We are not looking back. You know, look, this is the political season. We have, we have faced, we have months to the general election. So we, you of all people, you know, and everyone knows that in this season, people move. People contest primaries hoping to win. Sometimes they don't win. And sometimes they get upset. They're dissatisfied. Because not everyone who contests you know, can win. It's not possible. There are only so many slots available to fill to serve our country, from the presidency to the you know, House of Assembly. Therefore, somebody will come out unsuccessful. And those individuals have a right to be upset, to be dissatisfied. That's, that's natural. You know, I would wish, and all of us in a party, we wish that our colleagues and our brothers and sisters who contested and who may have lost would stay to try again the next time and not simply take, you know, uh, the highway. But that's just the nature of the engagement. But that is not an indication that anything has gone wrong or is going wrong in the party. That would be a very simplistic way to look at it. As a matter of fact, I did a piece uh, some time ago, which I called the revolving door. Because, you know, unfortunately, at this stage of our political evolution, we have yet to reach the point where commitment to ideology, to principles, you know, become the essence of membership of political parties. We will get there, but we're not there yet. We're still driven by a lot of personal, you know, um, career or, you know, um, you know sort of goal-oriented kind of politics, where it's about my interest and my aspiration. But we will, we will move away from that. But what is going on in APC is also happening in other parties. And it's, it's natural. By this time in 20, 2014, you saw a lot of movement from the ruling party at the time to APC and all of that. So people will move. It's inevitable. But I don't think that that's sufficient to suggest that something has gone wrong or is going wrong with our party. Our party remains the largest party in this country and in the entire continent. And we are facing the next elections with a lot of determination. Yes, of course, we will do everything to persuade our people. Because see, look, the truth of the matter is that it's not about some of these conversations. It's about 
are people who deserve the very best kind of government that they can find. They deserve that. They are citizens. And when you, as a political party, and you offer service, you must offer service to the fullest extent that is possible, you know, with, within available resources and, you know, both material, human, and, and financial resources that the country, you know, has to deliver the best service to our people. That's what they deserve. And right now, you know, Sheung, that is what every minute we have at the party, that is what we're discussing, how we are going to build upon and improve on the quality of service we've given, you know, under, uh, you know, President Muhammad Buhari, who has done an amazing job, despite all of the comments uh, and some of the sentiments you find. But if you really take them to look at the facts, to unpack the facts from national security to economy, you know, everywhere, you find that, you know, uh, the president has done well. And just to conclude, I think that when you really look at it, I think that we all need to pay just a little more attention to what's going on on the uh, opposition side. That party, the PDP, is crippled completely, you know, by their own internal crisis. That is where the discussion should be. That's where the attention should be. They are the ones who have shortchanged our idea of rotation, the idea of, you know, power balancing between the North and the South to take their presidential candidacy to the North. We took it to the South because, you know, our party believes in fairness. We have a president who is from the North of the country, and we thought, you know, for good reasons, that to balance out the need for peace and for unity and inclusiveness in this country, that we actually, you know, cede our pres presidency to the South. We've done that. But the PDP did the exact opposite, to go North. But, you know, those who don't want to actually, you know, uh, face the truth, would rather discuss, you know, uh, whether it's about Muslim Muslim ticket or discuss other things to distract from the fundamental breach of their own constitution. They are the only party that entrenched the principle of rotation in their constitution. But, you know, in flagrant breach of that principle, they did what? They pushed the presidency to the north. But you know what? It's up to Nigerians to decide whether our unity is, you know, uh, the, the need for unity is sufficient to actually reject uh, the call by that party uh, to be voted into office uh, come next year. Interestingly, uh, different strokes for different folks, uh, as the case is looking right now. Your, your party has its own burden that it needs to bear going into this election. Same with uh, the opposition, PDP, has its own burden. But what we're concerned with right now is the agenda of all of these political parties to the average Nigerian, to the generality of the Nigerian people, whether or not what right. you promise as a political party, you have been able to deliver. And that's why we're putting our, our, our spotlight on your party as a ruling party, whether or not you have been able to leave out of the building. Now we're billing. We're going into a critical election where the eight years of your party will be put on a scale of the promises made and the performance that has been delivered is up to Nigerians to uh, now determine and judge for themselves. They are the judge. They are the ones who hire your party, and they are the ones who will fire if they wish, and they are the one who will rehire if they wish so. But as it stands right now, we are concerned about the internal workings of this party because it has an effect on governance. And now I will take you up on the issue of rec reconciliation. The national chairman of your party was involved in reconciliation effort before he became a national chairman. And part of what these issues were, the issue of between uh, the minister, Greg Beshola, and Governor Yetala, your party was not able to resolve that crisis, leading to what some people uh, regarded as one of the major reasons your party lost in that election. You go into several other states, and I'd like to mention uh, a Quibom state. You go into state like Delta State, name them. You have crisis in some of these states. People who are aggrieved. Grievances, yes, are natural factors in political associations. But in this, there are fundamental issue to how you are able to reconcile and bring everybody, everybody back in, into the fold. What is your party doing in reconciliation effort? Uh, thank you so much. No, that's, that's a very fair and important question, you know, that um, you know, bringing the peace and winning the peace in the party, you know, bringing people together, um, you know, to give and take, to adjust, you know, a little bit, 
um, you know, in giving and in taking, so that we can have, you know, that sort of, um, you know, bringing people together to uh, pursue the, 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 the common goal of the party. That's, you know, a prerequisite, uh, not just for, you know, success uh, at election, but also, like you said, you know, has a huge, uh, I think, bearing on the kind of, you know, government we're able to form and, and the kind of government that we uh, offer our people, you know, in service. That's, that's a given, and I agree. But, you know, um, when you bring nearly 40 million people together in a political party, you bring all kinds of people. People with, you know, their own ideas, their own visions, their own aspirations, you know, their own idiosyncrasies and their own, you know, preferences and even personal cultures. It is almost inevitable that you will have some shade of disagreement, you know, whether before the election or during or after the election. That's for sure. But look, we are trying. Our national chairman every day, we see him meet with you know groups after groups on ending in effort to bring you know all the people who are disagreeing whether in different states or regions for that matter to bring them together to make them to see reason and to find common ground so it's an unfinished business that effort will continue into the election and even beyond the election that effort will continue because you know as long as people are together you're going to have disagreements you know what happened in Oshun you know, yes, I hear people refer to the, you know, um, difficulty between uh, those two, you know, eminent party leaders as a part of the, the program. You know what, you know, we haven't yet done, you know, a, 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 an audit to, you know, scientifically ascertain the factors or to allocate scale or weight to what factors cost, you know, uh, the outcome we had in Oshun. But like I said earlier, all of those lessons, even without any scientific study or assessment, we are you know, building back into our formulation of our strategies going forward. Oh, there are other, several other issues which I would like you to uh, touch on quickly. But let me allow you to, to look at this video. It was an interview with the INEC uh, spokesperson, Mr. Uh, Festus Okoye, about some of the issues that have been generated in your party that caused some controversies. I'd like you to listen to uh, these issues. Perhaps the accusation that there is an underhand dealing and uh, high-handedness of the leadership of your party about some of the names submitted to INEC. Take a listen to what the INEC man said. Fine. The commission has clarified. The commission has made it very clear that under section 29, subsection 1 of the Electoral Act, it is the responsibility of a political party to forward to the Independent National Electoral Commission the names or, or, or the list and personal particulars of their members who emerge from validly conducted party primaries. In these two constituencies, two names were forwarded, and the Commission made the determination that the names forwarded to us we are not persons who emerge from validly conducted party primaries, and we did not publish their particulars. And that is where we are. So the commission will not go out of its way to go and plead with a political party to forward the name of a candidate that uh, emerged from a validly conducted party primaries. If a political party does not forward the name of a candidate that emerged from valid party primaries, the implication is that that political party particular political party, we not have a candidate in the election for that particular constituency, and that is just, just the law. Mr. Moka, you heard uh, Mr. Okoye there. Why did your, or why would your party submit names of those who did not partake in a validly conducted party primaries to INEC? So, um, yes, I heard so Moka, I know, you my with dear friend, us. my old friend. Um, um, you know, our party conducted our primaries. We conducted our primaries um, in, I assume he's referring to, you know, Akwaibom and um, Yobe North, um, with respect to Akwaibom and um, the, uh, the Senate president, um, Ahmed Lawan. Um, you know, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, um, 
our party conducted primaries in in you know the, throughout the entire country for all of the districts, um, from national assembly to uh, to the state assemblies. Uh, of course, including the you know um, the, the the presidency, and names were uploaded to INEC. Now, as far as my information is concerned, all of the names that were submitted to INEC were people who emerged validly through our primaries. Now, as you know, Mr. Koe noted, it is the duty of the party to submit names to INEC of those who emerged, you know, from the context of primary which is what we've done. Now, I won't say more because some of the issues he mentioned are currently in active discussion between the party and INEC. And I'm sure that a resolution will be reached very soon that is consistent with what the party has done uh, in submitting the names of our candidates uh, to INEC. So anywhere there are issues, those issues are receiving attention from our national um, you know, leadership and from our legal um, you know, uh, division as well. Uh, so I know that there's an active conversation, so I wouldn't uh, say more about um, uh, that particular issue because you know, I hope that soon uh, the matter will be resolved consistently with the names that the party has submitted uh, to INEC. Mr. Felix Moka, thank you so much indeed for your time. Time will not permit us, but I mean, I would have loved, loved you to react because there, there are a lot of things that some people are grieved about, uh, about the leadership of your party. For example, the monies that are supposed to be refunded for those which was announced at your party primaries, for those who willingly withdrew from the race and all of that, so several other issues. Up to now, we understand that those monies have not uh, been refunded to them. But we must leave it at that because we are totally out of time and we need to allow you to engage uh, in the family uh, event that you you told us we we're going to attend to. Thank you so much indeed, Mr. Moka, for your time tonight. Well, that's great. Thank you so much. All right, Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. We'll take a break, everyone. And when we return, we're going to focus our attention on the People's Democratic Party. There is a Portacot Reconciliation meeting. The Article team and the WK team met. Plus, what happened earlier? Professor Gary again, I said, we can, don't be disappointed. One day you become president. Some of the intrigues of what is happening in the People's Democratic Party. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Some good news for the families of the abducted victims of the uh, Kaduna Abuja train attack, and that um, some of those who were abducted in the 28th of March this year. Four of those have been released today, including an 85-year-old woman, Hadia Halamatu Ata, a daughter, Adams Ali, and two others after spending over four months in captivity. Details on channels television. Stay with us as some of those stories are coming in. Let's move on now and let's tell you that there was a reconciliation meeting from the team Atiku, led by the governor of Adamawa State, Governor Hamadu Ufintiri, who arrived at Port earlier today, just after the commissioning that, that took place. Um, uh, the Ahmad Ufintiri team met with the WK team, where they discussed the issues behind closed doors. I'd like you to uh, listen to some of what the import of that meeting. Uh, we have met as leaders, members of the same political family, and uh, we have open discussion, uh, work in progress, and we will continue. At the end of the day, we will broker peace and we will unify the party and Nigerians. There is need for us to enhance unity within our party. This is a reconciliatory process. There are some issues out there which uh, need further deliberation. Then we will meet again. It's a continuous process. Let's get some clarity there from what happened today and the implication of all of this. I told you earlier, there are a series of meetings we understand that are going on as we speak 
uh, in the People's Democratic Party. One, uh, also, we include uh, the deliberation on the formation of the Article um, Okoa Presidential Campaign Council for the People's Democratic Party ahead of the 2023 elections. Let's uh, dig deeper into these reconciliation efforts in the People's Democratic Party. I'm being joined by our former national chairman of the PDP, uh, Mr. Haliru Bello Mohammed. He joins us uh, uh, in Abuja. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Let me get your view on uh, what has become, um, would you call it progress now? or the events that unfolded today from Port Harcourt. What's your view on the ongoings in your party? Well, I have never had any doubt that PDP would be able to resolve this crisis amicably in-house. Because this is not the first time we are going into a major crisis. We have gone through several since 1999, and PDP had the expertise, and we also have the people with the experience to come in and solve these crises. We have done it before. So what is happening in Port Harcourt today is uh, inspiring in the sense that Governor Fintry has just spoken that they have made progress, and I have no doubt they are going to come up with a solution that will uh, satisfy all concerned in this crisis. And we are going to go into the coming election as a strong party, united, and by the grace of God, we are going to win the election. Now, before I come to so, optimism about winning the election, I will because ask the members as, of um, our party, a very experienced uh, party administrator, uh, you, you must have uh, your reasons for thinking that your party will win the election, uh, in fact, at so early at this stage. Now, let me go into a question that I've asked and what has been bothering the minds of a lot of people, thinking that the party, your party, PDP, established before 1999, one election in 1999, has experienced myriads of crises. What makes this very crisis, this very problem, a very difficult yes. one to resolve? Why is it so special a problem? Why is it a naughty one? Why is it a difficult problem to resolve? Well, uh, nomination problems are always significant in, at any election. We have always come through them. But this particular one, because of the importance of Governor Wiki in our party, we remember he stood by the party when we were in deep crisis during the Ali Madi Sharif uh, problem. And he has also been a pillar supporting the party since then. Uh, in fact, the rebuilding of the party was uh, thanks to him and other governors of the party since we lost election in uh, 2015. But all the same, uh, the issue of nomination and especially nomination of the uh, running mate this time became problematic. Not because Achiku Abubakar has set up a committee. That was correct because last time in 2019, when the vice president was nominated without consultation, there was a lot of uh, complaints and brouhaha so this time around, uh, the Wazir of Adama corrected that mistake and consulted widely uh, among party members before nominating uh, his running mate. But the problem is, uh, as always, for any appointment or nomination, there are several contenders. And I believe the way it was handled uh, before announcement was the cause of the problem. Wiki had the right to feel slighted 
because he was expecting to be nominated and when the decision was made, uh, he was not uh, private to it before the announcement. I think that was the mistake that was made. But that is a minor issue. Wike is a loyal party man. As I said earlier, he had been uh, supportive of the party and I believe he would like PDP to win the presidential election. And after he consulted and assuaged, I'm sure he will support the candidate of Atiku Abubakar and work hard to make sure PDP wins the presidential election. I'm sure everything will be sorted out after this Port Harcourt meeting. Let me, since you have a medical background as, uh, as a uh, medical doctor, um, you, you probably, can you hear me now? Uh, vet, vet, veterinary surgeon. You are a veterinary, yeah. So you Hello? have, uh, uh, yeah, you have uh, experience in uh, medicine. So uh, let me use uh, medical language, perhaps, into this political logjam that your party has found itself. Uh, you've identified some of the problems surgically. If you were to address this problem, how would you isolate what has become a malignant disease uh, in the People's Democratic Party? that is coming almost every election cycle. And I'll, I'll draw your mind to what happened in 2015. Similar problems were, were, came up in the party. Some governors were not happy. And perhaps one of the reasons some governors have told me on several interviews that, that those problems were not resolved. And going into the election, that was why your party got a bloody nose. If you were in the position uh, to remove uh, the malignant disease and surgically operate it to get your party back on track ahead of 2023 election. What would you do differently this time? I, I, first of all, I, I don't agree with you that uh, we have a malignant disease in PDP. We have a what I consider a slight problem uh, a member of our party and a number of his supporters felt slighted in the process of nominating a vice presidential candidate. I, with the expertise and experience of PDP in problem solving, I don't think that is enough problem to be called a malignant. We are working on it. It is a difficult subject to discuss at this point because is something that is ongoing. We have a committee working in Port Harcourt, and one would not like to throw a hammer in the works. So I wouldn't want to go into much detail of what is happening or what can happen. But if I were to solve the problem, it will not even reach this uh, state. I think there has been some uh, I wouldn't say failure of leadership, but there has been some mistakes on, in the, on the side of the Board of Trustees. You know, Board of Trustees has a responsibility of moving in to resolve issues between party members or between party and legislature or between party or legislature and the presidency when we are in government. But at uh, this time, because we don't have a president, the Board of Trustees did not act as fast as it should. If Board of Trustees has stepped in and strongly called the parties to order, uh, this uh, problem will not reach the stage it has reached. But even then, it is not too late. Uh, the party has set up a process in motion and we are working on the problem, and I believe after this Port Harcourt meeting, there will no longer be any problem. Wike will come back and join his brothers and sisters in the leadership of the party, and we will move ahead to win the election in 2023. So t t tell me, um, what, what do you think that, uh, for example, 
uh, because you, you were talking about the fact that uh, that relationship was not properly managed uh, after the primaries and all of that. Uh, where was the misstep on the part of the presidential candidate? Is there any? Well, it must be said that the right to nominate a presidential renegade is the right of the candidate, and he has exercised it judiciously, and majority of the party is happy with the choice, so there is no mistake in that. Like I said, the mistake was on the part of the Board of Trustees, because when the announcement was made, uh, and Wiki was not properly consulted and assuaged to understand why he was not picked as against uh, Governor Okoa, the Board of Trustees is the one that should have moved in to assuage him and to bring him on the same uh, wavelength with the nominee of the party. But that was not done immediately, and Wike felt uh, slighted and neglected and felt unappreciated. I think that is what caused the whole problem. But now that steps are being taken to reach out to him, and he has agreed to meet with a team that has been set up by the presidential nominee, the Wazir of Adamawa, I think the very fact of agreeing to meet is an indication that he is ready for a reconciliation. And as soon as that is achieved, uh, he will join the campaign and he will play a prominent role in the campaign, as all of us will do. And uh, the party will be victorious by the grace of God. Let me uh, perhaps a final question on this issue of the rift, and uh, before I go into your optimism about the 2023 election and the performance of your party. Uh, my question will be, um, uh, there are those who are uh, saying uh, that one of the demands from the WK's team was that the national chairman, Yocha Ayu, should step down based on some of the commitment that was made that should there be an, uh, a party a candidate, a presidential candidate from the North, he would, uh, if the party wants him to step aside, he would, as a Democrat, do so. If you put yourself, or if you were in a position to negotiate and reconcile this situation, and if this is thrown up, would you say that Senator Yocha Ayu should step aside for the sake of peace? Well, Senator Ayu has made that statement, and he was right. Uh, the culture of PDP and the provisions of our constitution, including the provision of the Nigerian constitution, uh, makes it mandatory that whatever is being done or being planned should be done to reflect the diversity of Nigeria. And that is what the Nigerian constitution provides. That's what the PDP constitution provides. And that has been the culture in PDP. So if there is a president from the north, it is right that the chairman uh, should come from the south. But we have also got to look at the problem of sending away the chairman at this stage, just a few months to uh, election. The aim of the party is to win election. So if we find that sending out the chairman will upset the apple cart and make, make our preparations for the 2023 election, I can see the point of those who are saying the chairman should not be changed now. On the other hand, uh, I have a personal experience that when uh, Chief Umwodo, who was our chairman then, uh, had problem and he had to step down from being chairman during our convention of 2011. I stepped in as the chairman 
and I was not removed for a substantive national chairman until after the election because the party felt it would be disruptive for a chairman to be dropped just a few months to election. So you can see it has happened before, but now we are in a peculiar situation where we have to assess how will removal of the chairman affect our preparation for the 2023 election. And I believe the relevant organs of the party are looking at it and giving it consideration. But uh, Ayu himself has agreed that if there is a president from the north, the chairman should come from the south. But the issue now is the timing. So it is for the party organs to meet and decide what is the best time and what is the best option for the party, uh, seeing that we are only a few months from the general election. All right, uh, let's uh, anchor on the reason why you are optimistic that your party would win 2023 presidential election. What gives you that optimism? I know in politics, a week is a long time, but uh, there are several reasons why every right-thinking person will believe that PDP will win the 2023 election. One item alone is enough to get to that conclusion. The way the APC has messed up the nation, they have messed up the economy, they have messed up the security, they have messed up the livelihood of the people, and that in itself will make the people of Nigeria feel that it is, God forbid, to return to APC government. But apart from that, there are many other things, like the performance of PDP uh, from 1999 to 2015. Everybody, every right-thinking politician or, and voter will know that there is a marked difference between the situation of the nation in the economy and in the security, in the sector of education compared to the seven years of APC. Even that enough will make any right thinking person feel that uh, nobody would like to go back to APC rule. As you can see, the educational uh, sector in yeah. Nigeria so, is in a turmoil. Uh, we have never had it so bad. I mean, the, the, and who, and um, if you so want to feel, to, uh, to, just, to just a minute, please. Time, if I you want to feel, uh, very point, which is very just, just, a, just, a min, just a minute, please. Just a minute, just a few, uh, a few the seconds. Party and the APC, if you want, if you want to check, check your your, your pocketbook. Mm. Pardon? All right. So let me throw the question. You didn't listen to me. So there are those who I mean, but, uh, have the opinion that yeah, your party and the APC are somewhat like a CME strength. Some who say they are in fact six and a half a dozen. That doesn't really uh, make a lot of difference. Some opposition would describe the two parties as such. In fact, the APC will blame your party that some of the rot they met on the ground was as a result of what was done when your party was in power when they took over, for example. The arms deal and the monies from the NSA office, the accusation, which, in fact, some of the accusation went, fingers were pointed at yourself. The fact that the reason why security deteriorated to this point, these are some of the issues. And you think that Nigerians would vote for your party considering this background? But you know that uh, APC and PDP are far apart. PDP from 1999 to uh, 2015 has performed creditably because uh, the Boko Haram started during Aradwa's time. But within a short time, it was quenched and there was peace. Uh, and it was contained 
within a few local governments in the northeast uh, zone of Nigeria. It is the coming of APC that created a situation where uh, not only the Boko Haram spread, but other security uh, challenges due to bandits uh, and other rebellious uh, groups spread not only to northwest but to north central and as at present every right thinking person knows that there is no state no local government in nigeria that you can say is safe so you cannot say this a uh, Guardian, strategy the, I can, apologies sir the, for those who will say that uh, the monies they were meant to fight boko haram and purchase arms to our military to fight went into private pockets. And these are some of the reasons why things deteriorate. I mean, do you have answer to why that happened and the accusation that was been leveled against some of you who were in the PDP when APC got into power at the time? No, uh, when APC got into power, uh, I was going to tell you we handed over an economy that is number one in Africa. And we didn't hand over insecurity outside the uh, Northeast. In fact, before uh, President Jonathan handed over, all the local governments that were taken by the Boko Haram in the Northeast were recovered. There was not a single local government that was under the control of uh, Boko Haram. But when Buhari came, it's common knowledge that uh, some of the technical assistants that were invited by President Jonathan to assist the Nigerian army were frustrated and sent out of the country. And I'm sure even the APC government regretted that action of uh, President Muhammad Buhari um, of sending out sir, we, the technical totally assistance that was well, invited to, you for, for, for your for, to the Army. Uh, we need to close because we are approaching the top of the hour. Yeah, apologies, sorry. We are totally out of time. Thank you so much indeed for your time tonight and your thought that you've shared with us. Well, but as our show for tonight, everyone, much, many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Kimbale. Bye-bye.